Honestly, how did you make it this far in life without knowing this? I mean, you use it every single second of your day to look up things you should already know. To buy things you don't need and argue with complete strangers about pineapple on pizza. Today, I'll explain the internet to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll be able to confidently explain to your friends how a video of a cat falling off a couch travels across the internet planet just to get to your phone. Alright, let's get started. First, I need you to forget everything you think you know. I mean, the internet isn't some magical cloud floating up in the sky. It's not some invisible force field of imagination. The internet, for the most part, is simply a giant collection of wires. That's it. It's a whole bunch of different computers in different rooms, different buildings, and different cities, all connected to each other with very, very, very long strings. Or in this case, cables. Imagine every house in the world was a Lego house, and we connected every single one with a piece of yarn. That's basically the internet. It's a physical thing. I mean, you could touch it. Please don't. I mean, you can, but that doesn't mean you should. So, you have all these connected computers. Now what? Well, some of these computers are pretty special. They're called servers. And a server is just a fancy, powerful computer that's always turned on, and its only job is to store and share stuff. Think of a server like a public library that's open forever and never closes. This library doesn't have books, though. It has websites, pictures, and videos. All the junk that you just look at online. I mean, every time you're watching a video, you're asking a server somewhere to show it to you. And that server is a physical machine sitting in a big air-conditioned room, probably hundreds or thousands of miles away. It's simply a big computer hard drive that everyone is allowed access to. It's the giant toy box that holds all the cool toys, and its owner lets everyone borrow them whenever they want. Now, if the server is the library, then you're the person asking for a book. And in internet speak, your computer or your phone is called a client. You're the client. You sit at home and say, hey, I would like to see that video of the cat. I mean, you're making a request. And the server is the thing that holds the video up and serves it to you. Client and server. You ask, it gives. It's a pretty simple relationship, honestly. I mean, you're the demanding toddler, and the server is the tired parent who just gives you the toy to make you quiet. But wait, if there are billions of computers connected, how does this server with the cat video know where to send it? How does it find your specific phone out of all the other phones in the world? This is where the addresses come in. Every single device connected to the internet, whether it's a server or your phone or your weirdly smart refrigerator, has a unique address. It's called an IP address. And an IP address is pretty much just a long string of numbers that works exactly like your home address. It tells the mailman exactly which house to deliver the mail to. I mean, without an IP address, sending information online would be like trying to mail a letter to Bob who lives somewhere in America. It would never get there. Your IP address ensures that the cat video is delivered to your screen and not your neighbors. It's pretty much the internet's way of knowing exactly where you live. So, you the client ask a server for a cat video. The server knows your IP address, but it doesn't send the whole video file at once. That would be like trying to shove an entire car through a mail slot. It simply wouldn't fit, and it would just clog up the whole system. So instead, the internet is very clever. It breaks the big video file down into thousands of tiny little pieces. And these pieces are called packets. And think of it like this. If you wanted to mail someone a giant Lego castle, you wouldn't put the whole castle in a box. You'd take it apart, brick by brick, and you'd put each brick in a tiny envelope, number it, and then put the destination address on every single one. And that's pretty much what packets are. They're tiny, bite-sized chunks of the bigger file, and each one is labeled with the destination's IP address, the sender's IP address, and the information about where it fits in the puzzle. And now, you have thousands of tiny packets that need to get from the server in California to your phone in Ohio. And this is where the real journey begins. These packets are sent down into the maze of wires, and to make sure they don't get lost, they're guided by special devices called routers. And a router is like a traffic cop for the internet. Imagine a mailman who gets to a street corner and doesn't know whether to turn left or right. A router is the person standing at the corner who looks at the address on the mail and says, ah, you need to go that way. Routers are everywhere, at every intersection of the internet, constantly looking at the addresses on each packet and pointing it in the right direction, sending it along the fastest and least crowded path. Your little packets might not even travel together. Some might go through Texas, some through Chicago. They simply find the best way to get there. They're little digital adventures on a mission. And how is it that these packets travel so fast? Well, through those wires we mentioned. 
Most of the internet's long distance connections are made of fiber optic cables. These are amazing little tubes of glass that transmit information using light. Literally, light. They flash tiny pulses of light on and off incredibly fast to represent the data in your packets. So your cat video is basically turned into light, shot through a glass tube across the country, maybe even under an ocean. Yes, there are giant armored cables lying on the ocean floor connecting continents. So, when you send an email to someone in Europe, the packets that make up that email are literally turned into flashes of light that travel through a cable at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. No, it's not magic. It's just really, really cool engineering. It's a super fast, secret, underwater highway for your information. Okay, so the packets have traveled across the country, guided by routers through fiber optic cables. They've finally arrived at your house, but your phone isn't plugged into the wall with a giant cable, is it? Well, this is where Wi-Fi comes in, and I need you to listen very carefully. Wi-Fi is not the internet. Let me say it again. Wi-Fi is not the internet. The internet is this giant network of wires connecting the world, and Wi-Fi is simply the very last step. Your internet service provider runs a physical cable to your house. That cable then plugs into that little black box with the blinking lights, which is your router, and the Wi-Fi is simply the wireless signal that lets your phone talk to that box without needing another cord. It's like a walkie-talkie with a very short range. It connects your phone to your router, and your router is what's connected to the actual internet. Wi-Fi just covers the last few feet of the packet's long, long journey. But there's one last piece of the puzzle. When you want to watch that cat video, you don't type in a bunch of numbers, right? I mean, you don't type an IP address. You type something like cutecatvideos.com. Humans are good at remembering words, not long strings of numbers. But computers are quite the opposite. I mean, they only understand numbers, so we simply need a translator. And this is the job of something called the DNS, which stands for Domain Name System. The DNS is basically the internet's giant address book. When you type a website name into your browser, your computer first sends a quick message to a DNS server and asks, hey, what's the IP address for cutecatvideos.com? And the DNS server looks it up in its massive list and replies with the correct IP address. It's like asking your phone to call mom instead of having to remember her 10-digit phone number. The DNS finds the number so you don't have to. Alright, let's put it all together from start to finish. You're sitting on the couch, you type cutecatvideos.com into your phone, and your phone sends a request to a DNS server to get the IP address. The DNS sends it back, and now your phone knows the address of the server where the cats live. It sends a request to that server's IP address saying, Please send me the video of the cat falling off the couch. The server, which is a big computer maybe a thousand miles away, says, Sure thing. It takes the giant video file, breaks it into thousands of tiny little packets, and addresses each one to your phone's IP address. Those packets travel as flashes of light through fiber optic cables guided by routers at every intersection, and they might even go under oceans or across mountains. And finally, they reach the cable connected to your house. They travel into your router, which then broadcasts them wirelessly via Wi-Fi for the last few feet to your phone. Your phone catches all these packets, checks the numbers on them to make sure that they're all arrived, and reassembles them in the correct order. Like putting together a Lego castle from a pile of bricks. And poof! A cat simply appears on your screen, and you get to giggle for 12 seconds. And all of this happens in less than the time it takes you to blink. So... The internet is simply a giant network of computers talking to each other through really long wires. You ask for something, your request gets looked up in a giant phone book, it gets sent to the right library computer, and the thing you asked for gets chopped into little pieces and mailed back to you through a series of traffic cops. See? Not magic. Just very, very fast mail being sent by very, very smart machines. And there you go. Now you officially understand how the entire digital world gets delivered to your eyeballs. You're no longer just a person who uses the internet. You're a person who gets it. I mean, you're basically a genius. So go on, explain it to someone else. Make them feel silly for not knowing.